Yeah, so what's what do you think is happening with the molten stuff, molten reactors? I just as curious as if, if as to why I haven't heard more from elsewhere or right. what, what might be going on. There is a growing online community. Um, we actually had a presidential candidate who, in the Democratic Party, Andrew Yang, who oh, talked yeah. about it. Oh, really? He did, yeah. yeah. It's not a big, it wasn't a big part of his platform, but um, he knows about it. You yeah. Know, and he's a smart guy. Uh, and in the context of the it, it in the rare earth element industry, just today, um, June 29th, uh, there was an article front page of the Wall Street Journal on its website about America being dependent on China for rare earth elements. Yeah. So it, I think it is, I think it's like one maybe summer away from becoming a viral type of campaign where maybe we will be seeing it on in the New York Times, you know, in yeah. the Seattle Times. And at the, I think it's ready to break out yeah. in its breakout role, yeah. you know. Which will be kind of funny because part of the part of it entering the public consciousness, actual pub, you know, mainstream media will be, oh, why didn't we do this before? Yeah. And why is China <laughs> well so far ahead? Yeah. You know, because they are they are ten years ahead of us. Yeah. Like there there's not there's not much solid research, especially at the government level, going on yeah. in the Western world. Yeah. There's awareness and there's some minor research, peripheral research, but yeah. you know. So, so is it? You think what's what's making the change in the West? Is it pressure for lack, or is it the opportunity to make money, uh, or both? Or do you think there's a, or is that a good question? Well, it sits at the intersection of environmentalism and peak oil, yeah, and um, energy. You know, just yeah. energy future. <clears throat> so that that's, those are big three pretty important things. And so the pressure is coming from down below. Yeah. You know, it did start at the grassroots. It's yeah. not it's not some government led initiative. It's so it's not climate change, the primary motive, for example. It no, it is. I would say it is. is it? These yeah. are carbon dioxide free. No, I understand, but yeah. if it's if it's just the pressure to because of oil disappearing and and or in you know, people not making money on oil and <laughs> Another on the same day today, a big major article is actually yesterday as well. I, I'm still kind of on the night shift. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, Chesapeake Energy, a major fracking company, big. It's a huge one, major yeah. player in the business. Yeah. Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Yeah. Restructuring debt. People are, going, are people are going to really start to go. What's going on? Yeah. Why are all these fracking companies going bankrupt? Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. So. It's that too, you know. It, but it, honestly, in the Western world, I, at not just the Western world, but especially the United States with its car culture, yeah. we cannot even accept the abstract notion of peak oil. We have to reject it as if it was Satan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the devil, and all his angels. You must yeah. do you reject him because. Whether it's true or not, it it means that we cannot live at our lifestyle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hell, even if we found even if we found twice the amount of oil in the ground magically somewhere, we forgot to look in Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> We're so inefficient and in, in our use of all of our resources, yeah. but especially oil. Yeah. Think of it, we are a car based civilization. Yeah. We made every everything revolves around the car. Yeah. Our housing, our suburbs, our cities. The car devoured everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. No, that's true. I mean, drive in this, drive in that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you know, and one of my great disappointments in China from the time that I started going until recently was they increasingly, I mean, yep. they were selling more cars and building more cars. Yeah. And they have all these freeways now. I mean, freeways, but they still also have great public transportation they do. systems. I oh, mean, yeah. you fly into an airport and get on a subway, go downtown. And mm -hmm. I mean, you don't even leave a building. You yeah. Know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. And of course, that's all the major cities of the. Uh, I just was, wa I, I watched like YouTube, yeah. you know, high quality yeah. videos. One was, it was just a tour of Guangzhou. Yeah. And down in the south. And it's gorgeous. It's brand spanking new. Yeah. Excellent public transportation, you yeah. know, vibrant city life. Yeah. So they're not, 
it was a mistake. They should not have done as much as they did with cars. They shouldn't have. Let's hope they pull back. I think maybe yeah. they are yeah. with the high-speed well, rail. Well, high-speed rail, and if they can go to electric cars. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, and I think I read where that's where Tesla, I think, sees its biggest market. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, it's, I don't know what spending power the American middle class has anymore, but it's all going to healthcare. Why? Who can afford an electric car in the United States? Yeah. <laughs> Another thing about the molten salt reactor is you can hook them up to various chemical factories. Really cool stuff. Yeah. Induction, you know, steam turbine making these induction uh, magnets, yeah. heating, making superheated stuff that allows to, that makes very economical. Yeah. chemical engines to make liquid fuels yeah so and the estimates are that essentially in about 10 years fossil fuels are not going they're not going to disappear but they're going to be uneconomical yeah there'll be old coal and old mines sitting there yeah maybe four out of five 80 percent eight out of ten of these molten salt reactors will be used to make liquid fuels for our transport yeah. Which means they would scrub a billion tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere every day. Yeah. And then re we put it back in when yeah. we burn it. Yeah. What's well, nothing wrong with that, yeah. in my view. Th that's, that's okay. Yeah. 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 You ha if you live on a finite planet with a very thin atmosphere that you have to keep clean. And we do live on a finite, oh. in a finite atmosphere. And it gets just grimmer and grimmer all the time, as you know. I mean, the Antarctic, the Arctic, Siberia on fire. Oh and, yeah. uh, uh, and it's breaking into the public consciousness. Yeah. You know, I do. I think between this and health disasters and the other things, people are going, oh, we are mortal. Yeah. You know, like we aren't all powerful. Yeah. The American dream is essentially gone. Yeah. It was always too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's encouraging. I, it is. Yeah. I won't see it probably at my age, but. You are seeing it. Well, I am seeing it, but I won't see it where, you know, where I'm. Where I feel more, as optimistic as I'd like to feel. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, well, maybe I will. Who knows? I could go another ten years and good. feel be, feel more optimistic. But you know, it's pretty hard to be optimistic. I mean, you're you're. I mean, I learned all about this. You know, the fusion from you. Yeah. And fission. The, I mean, fission. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, so I mean, that gives me, like I say, some hope. But yeah. I just wonder if it's too late. You know, who knows what'll happen? I mean, COVID, you know, is 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 just shows us how one, the oneness of the world. Yeah. And the, and that the world really doesn't care about us. We need responsible governments to uh, and you know we yeah. need to support things like the world health and research and yeah. And what we do, we throw money into people's pockets. I mean, it's all based on. I, I, I see. I don't understand that. To me, that's a mistake. If you put the money into research and working on the virus rather than giving me, I don't need twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah, you know. No, I. You're not wrong, Muggs. But the, the idea is to go. If people go spend money, everything's okay. The consumption, right? That was basically the post war settlement. Yeah. You know, we would. The supply of credit to the American consumer was essentially infinite what made up the difference between the imbalance of consumption versus production. How, how, if the economy is real and balanced, how could a people, a nation, consume more than it produces? Yeah. That's not possible. The difference is made up from the energy content of fossil fuels yeah. and all that debt, and it's over now. It's over. Yeah. We are, the United States is bankrupt. Yeah. Our government is bankrupt. Yeah. It's, le it's going, the initiative is now in the hands of others on how they're going to deal with our bankruptcy. Yeah. We can't balance our budget. It's impossible. Yeah. And what's happening kind of is our elites, some of them probably people we've never, so rich we've never heard of them, but the overall culture of Wall Street, the Pentagon, Washington, D.C., that evil triumvirate. Yeah. You know, th three evil... <laughs> you know, legs of a stool that form a steady plane, you know, yeah. like you only need three legs to make a stool that can match on any surface that's been bouncing around, stomping around the world since World War II. Uh, they are chasing a shrinking supply 
space, uh, supplies and natural resources. And they know they can't tell Russia what to do at all yeah. or China what to do. And they'll never break into those markets yeah. the way they want. And it's and at this point, it's like break into it with what? Yeah. You know, all your stuff is produced by them anyway. So they are in this is actually full pell-mell retreat. It's a route. They're retreating even faster than they can pull resources back. You know, you know, it's like a military that gets overextended too deep in enemy territory, but it's sacked some cities and it's got all this loot. They have to make it back. They have to make it back into their home base, their home fortress. And yeah. they're running and they're like, oh, no, I have to drop the rare earth element industry and I have to drop <laughs> these other things while the, the enemy you're running away from is catching up. Yeah. But it almost sounds like, I mean, when you talk about the military and the industrial and the rich and that it almost sounds like, you know, on the, on the right, they talk about the deep state. Yeah. You know, and that's sure. Uh, uh, that there's some whole, uh, how this Kabbalah. Yeah. Shadowy. Yeah. yeah. I don't mean that, yeah. but if we were to say the overall culture of, uh, Washington D.C. to do the civilian governance. Yeah. The Pentagon to do the to manage the overseas empire, and somehow it's fine that we just drop the bomb, drop bombs on people all the time, mm. and sanctions and things like that. Wall Street to recycle the the financial uh, proceeds of this horrible in endeavor, and then Hollywood to make the movies to make us feel good about it, to provide the <laughs> cultural <laughs> veneer. That's it. Yeah. How is the? I mean, you go to Disneyland. Yeah. You feel good about the empire when you come back. I one time in one another time I just. Oh, maybe that's him. It's the door. No. I don't think so. Somebody's knocking at the door. Hello. I don't think they are. It sure sounded like. It was the. It was the curtain. Huh? It was the magnets oh. on the curtain. It yeah. Sure sounded like a. Yeah. A rap, rap, rap. Yeah. But. You know, I describe Las Vegas as a, a pilgrimage site. Yeah. It's the pilgrimage site of capitalism, the religion of capitalism. Yeah. And there it is. And it was all based on fossil fuels, nuclear weapons, military supremacy. You'll notice the only people we've actually fought in real wars since World War II have not been pure competitors. Yeah. It's been poor people. Yeah. This is normal for empires, Western empires. Yeah. You don't go, you don't want to go toe to toe with somebody you might actually lose to, because yeah. they and are. Even, so, and even then, we didn't win. <laughs> no, our military cannot take casualties. Yeah, Vietnam, Korea, yeah, Afghanistan, and Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Syria, yeah, Ukraine. We broke Ukraine. Yeah, you know, uh, others. Just, it's very. It's a very dismal story, um, but thank thankfully it's coming to an end right before our very eyes, and it ends with bankruptcy and printing money. Yeah. It, it, you know, at least one of the estimates for the cheapest, most robust, simplest um, molten salt reactor, we could get into details, uh, from research and development to full deployment to replace all the coal and natural gas plants in the world for electricity generation would cost about three trillion dollars, which is not that much. Not in today's <laughs> environment. Yeah, I mean they just printed like seven trillion dollars. Yeah, they printed it to enable domestic consumption. Sort of, they are getting their money out. The final confiscation of a citizen's wealth. Uh, uh, the the final step a government can take. To confiscate its citizens' wealth is printing money. Yeah. It it inflates artificial consumption. Yeah. You sell it to them, you get the and you pull the the wealth out. And the and the and the, the people that really gain from it are the already wealthy. Yes. Yeah, the people yeah. who were first in line to get the printed money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh boy. It's fine. It's yeah. the but there the world is full of dead empires. The yeah. Athenian Empire. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of them. The arc of history does bend towards justice. Yeah. See, and that's uh, it, there is the optimist in me that that knowledge and understanding will, well, along with empathy, yes, and uh, the recognition that could be me, that 
I think that education is so important for that. Why? Hmm. I, I, more so than religion, by a long shot. You know, our, my religion that I was raised in says you should care for other people, but it really hasn't done that, in my opinion. No, it hasn't. Here, here we go. Yeah. I got one. I believe in one progress, the Father, the Almighty, conqueror of heaven and earth. I believe in heavy technology, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the holy markets and is born in virgin territory. He suffered under socialism, was regulated, reviled, and harried. It is all just as well. In his own, in his own way, he rose again. He will take us to the heavens as long as we believe in the Father. He will not be challenged by the living again. I believe in the holy markets, the holy financial church, the commutation of debt in human nature's sins, the submission of history, and the wealth everlasting. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, you sh it should say the great white father, really. Sure. Well, yeah. sure. European. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the circumstance that the, that the powerful are white. That's just a circumstance, but that's who <laughs> they are. And, uh, and it is... Yeah, it is just, I mean, you know, my, one of the things that at an early age that you, in an education, you realize how exploited Native Americans, the slaves, and then the blacks, I mean, you know, all these groups is just a question of exploitation. And they, one of the, I think I mentioned this in one of our earlier ones, Darwin. Yeah. I love Darwin yeah. in the Voyage of the Beagle when he's in Argentina, and he just sees what the Spanish have done. Oh, and yeah. Like that, he says, there's, he, his comment about the Spanish was, they're, what they do is they convert people into into Christians and slaves at the same time. Mm -hmm. All that, that's what they did. Yeah. There's no, there's no contradiction in that. Yeah, they would uh, when they when they were still fighting and it wasn't a done deal. Yeah, like against the Inca and stuff. Uh. Uh, Pizarro, they captured the last uh, Inca em emperor, and they had to baptize him before they executed him. Well, <laughs> why not just kill him? <laughs> why did you have to baptize him then? But in that mindset that... of actual belief in what, you know, true faith, yeah. you had to. Yeah. We, have, we can't send him to hell. Yeah. We have to give him the chance yeah. Before we kill him. Yeah, but kill him. The same thing ha I, I I honestly believe I'll I'll take this line I'll do two other examples of that. Similar thing happened with the Nazis. If you're gonna eliminate a people from history, gone, why keep records? Yeah. Why did they have to meticulously keep track of the names of all the Jews they exterminated, yeah. among others? Why? Just let it go. Yeah. That's what you're doing anyway, but see that contradiction? Yeah. And here's the final one. It is illegal under international law. It is it is as argue, the legality is sewn up tight the legislation for the, you know, charter on human rights and these other things to give to make torture legal. It is illegal to even attempt to make it justified. That, that in itself is a crime mm -hmm. to, to write laws that make it legal for the state to torture people. So why did George W. Bush and Dick Cheney have their legal aides, their own people, it's their own lapdog, they had legal aides write up justifications to torture people. Yeah. In our, you know, well, they're terrorists and therefore they're not enemy combatants. You could put George W. on trial at the UN, at The Hague, as he should be. Yeah. He should be arrested and brought to The Hague and put on trial. Yeah. And the, le the very thing that he thought justified his torture would be evidence against him, and he would not feel a contradiction. Yeah. The same way Pizarro baptized the guy he was going to kill. Yeah. If you baptized him, now he's a Christian. Yeah. Are you allowed to kill Christians? If the Nazis are trying to exterminate the Jews, why do you keep track of it? Yeah. Why do you have to write down their names? Yeah. It's the same horrifying you know if america is the leader of the free world why do we behave like this <laughs> why don't we act benevolently it well we know why you know all about that wealth yeah
And that's where, what you see repeated in history with these various empires. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. you've studied history uh, yeah. intensively. <laughs> What's interesting is the ones that kind of aren't. Yeah. So like the Athenian Empire was this itty bitty, you know, it's a corner of the Aegean. It's, it's this beautiful, very well documented. You know, we know a lot of the very detailed events of the democracy and the, and the, and the first empire that yeah. they had. Not very long into it, the other Greeks who were part of their empire, you know, the, the Ionian coast and all that, are like, you guys have enslaved us. You are not, you know, you might be a democracy, but we aren't. So are we a part of your empire or not? Are you defending us from the Persians or not? You know, yeah. whereas other empires like the Persian empire governed with a much lighter hand. And yeah. it was basically send us tribute and we'll keep the peace. Yeah. You know, they didn't, the Achaemenid empire, 250 years, yeah. you know, and it was very, it was brutally, um, political at the top the very top of the leadership yeah. but overall it was i mean you couldn't even call it exploitative yeah it was just basically keep the roads open keep the bandits down we're going to send on our satraps but it's not much more than keep the peace yeah you know they didn't try to they didn't try to make a common culture from of jews and egyptians and armenians and medes and yeah. lydians and greeks <laughs> and all these other it was just like it was just it was almost a united nation yeah it really was. Yeah. And if you and if you rebelled and fucked up, they'd send in a big army, put it down. Yeah. You know? But they didn't even deport many people. Huh. The, the Cyrus the Great is the only non-Jew who was ever called a Messiah by the Jews. Yeah. Because he let him go home. Yeah. It was a commonwealth. Yeah. It wasn't. Whereas the Athenian Empire was brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Huh. We've been chasing the wrong, we being the United States empire post-World War II, we've been chasing the wealth of poor and weak people. Wow, you're, you're trying to squeeze water from a stone. Yeah. Why not unlock their labor and then skim off the top? But yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. screwed up so, we screwed up so badly. Yeah. We're going to go down as one of the stupidest people in the world. <laughs> You know what you can use to start up these molten salt reactors? Because you need that little spark of kindling. Huh. Plutonium. Yeah. Uranium. 235, the very stuff that's in the core of our nuclear weapons. Yeah. You only need like three nuclear weapons to actually keep your borders safe. Yeah. All the others, it can be megatons to megawatts. Yeah. And we're sitting there on these... We have like 5,000 nuclear weapons. That we know of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. I mean, it's insane. The math is quite sound. You know, it's like, well, you, know, you need this much plutonium to start up a 50 megawatt. And once you get it going, you don't have to keep adding kindling. You need to start it up once, and then the neutron flux is enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and here we have this expensive structure to, to maintain it. It's going to be, it's going to, the next, it's when, when they say the world is going to end all it, whenever somebody says that, all it means is, is my lifestyle going to have to change? Yeah. We know the world will go on. Yeah. Billions of years old. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, the, if you're worried about a failure of human imagination or your own culture's imagination, just think of what nature's imagination is like in DNA and yeah. evolution. So don't worry about lack of imagination. Oh, no, I mean... Just because you I, don't, you know. Yeah, but I really do. I mean, the older I get, the more I'm amazed. You know, I used to look at a bird or a spider mm. with awe and wonder. Sure. I, you know how much I love natural history. Oh, yeah. But the more I do that, the more I see that there's more in there, in these brains than just rea action reaction oh, yeah. stimulus reaction i mean it's incredible yeah that the, the awareness that these things must have to make oh. to make the decisions that they have yeah i've had a the past two nights i've had a, a hawk i think it's a red tail but i don't, maybe not well they usually nest here there's a pair of them they're pretty yeah. big i've seen them hunting starlings yeah oh really yeah I, but I couldn't figure out. I'm like, what? why is he swooping around all weird? And there was a murmuration, you know, the flock of stars. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I've yeah, never, never seen... seen it got one. It never got one. Yeah. That, because there was usually a one single crow harassing it. Yeah. And I mean, there are, there are the red tails used to, to, uh, yeah. Oh, they, here it is. Yeah. They, 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 but it, it has a smoother, uh, red tails are kind of raggedy. Yeah. You know, this one has a smoother outline. Uh, my, I'll bet you it wasn't. It might've had a narrow ta narrower tail. It could have been an occipiter. Not yeah. A guido, but yeah. Yeah. Damnedest thing. And I'm, I'm going to look again tonight. I yeah. Really <laughs> Neat. Yeah. And, and not only the, I mean, the starlings, too. Or the, oh, yeah. They're amazing. They might have been blackbirds instead of starlings, do you think? I think they're starlings. Because yeah. sure. yeah. I usually get a lot of starlings. I quit feeding birds for many reasons, but sure. I get the blackbirds and they get big flocks. But yeah. it could be starlings, for yeah. sure. Starlings themselves are amazing. Oh, yeah. They yeah. really are. <laughs> and I mean, so, I mean, it feels, you think of, the European settlement of the Americas and Australia and what was lost. Okay, we should mourn that loss. Yeah. But that doesn't detract from the future in any way. It's a strange one, you know. It's like, yeah. In the same way, your own personal death does not diminish you. Yeah. You know, you're not diminished by your death. Mm -mm. It's, it's a part of what the world is and yeah. what it's like. So I think of, think of the political... Uh, and social evolution that will happen yeah. in North America and South America and Australia once the shackles are broken yeah. of our of our financial empire that just says nope this is the lifestyle you have yeah. you commute to work you live in a way too consumptive house you yeah. know yeah. and of all like this overpriced <laughs> inefficient lifestyle live a kind of psychologically broken existence that requires you to consume more and more and that breaks apart shatters communities that's gonna go away no, because it is going away right before your very eyes you know, it's happening yeah you know, that's it's happening that's so true i mean i mean you know i remember when i moved to went to graduate school in los angeles they had a pretty apparently at one time a pretty good public transportation system oh, yeah. there was one here that came out to span away sure and that sort of thing but my understanding is it was General Motors and the automobile companies that got them, had them get rid of the public transportation. Yeah. So that then they could sell more cars and people yep. move to the suburbs. Yeah. And of course, as you say, I mean, we, you know, I've lived here longer than you have in this area. I mean, it's this every development that goes out here, and most of these people are probably working in Seattle. Yeah. I mean, that's where they're working because they yes. can't afford Seattle houses. Yeah. And meanwhile, the whole economy is so based on selling these houses and selling the cars. Oh, man. I mean, that's what, and selling the gas. You want to talk about a bubble popping. I mean, the mortgage, there's, there's a, another mortgage crisis coming. Mm -hmm. Nobody can pay rent. Nobody yeah. can make their mortgage. Yeah. You just had 50 million people be put on the dole. Yeah. It's, it, this is not over. The yeah. economic consequences are no, not I, over. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's coming to an end. I, and speaking of that, you know, like the, the personal choices I've made with my life and whatnot, yeah. you know, the, the fact that I use a scythe instead of a strimmer, a, a, tr a weed whacker, yeah. a loud, noisy, expensive, stupid thing. Yeah. People look at me like I am from another planet. They're yeah. like, what, what, why would you cut your lawn for hay? Yeah. I, there's no, there, at a certain point, there's no argument. Yeah. It's no either argument. are you going to live here or are you going to live in this imaginary realm called America? Yeah, no, I you understand. They, yeah. and they, it's a moral, it's literally a moral issue. It, it is a moral issue. It is immoral to not mow your lawn. Yeah. You are sinning against God. Yeah, and or turn it into this. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I realized actually a long time ago, I never lived far away from where right. I worked. I never did. But I I think if I, were, if I were to start out on a job again, I would live where I could have public transportation or walk to work. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking if I knew then what I know now. Right. I mean, but uh, I was always somewhat conscious. But but uh, but people, I, to me, you make sense what you're doing out here. Right, you're but you're young. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Uh, with me, I've sort of gone the op opposite way. The longer I, the older I get, because I try. This was rural. This yeah. area was basically rural yeah. when I moved out here. 
And so I planted native plants. So it's not as easy to do as you think. Because oh. I was thinking about birds and the insects and the animals and stuff like that. And uh, I made the mistake of planting some non-native things I wish I'd never done. But the native, even the native stuff, it's not that easy. No. And the easiest thing I've discovered to take care of is a lawn. It really is. Fair you enough. just go out and mow it. I mean, yeah. and so you're older and you're thinking, uh, so, but you are doing the right thing. You really are. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. No, you really are. I mean, the, the scale of like what, I think the intensity of what will become economically necessary for people, yeah. just Americans, is going to bite so hard it's going to hurt so badly because our imaginations have been utterly crushed by disney yeah. by the american propaganda machine and the idea of like what do you mean there's no more prosperity in the future yeah what do you mean i'm just going to be a farmer for the rest of my life yeah they can't. They will. They will. They will contemplate any level of violence or destruction projected against any perceived outsider before they accept that reality. No, I. I that's what worries me. I am not a peasant. Well, How, you, do not tell me I am a peasant. I am a superior creature. I am an American. Yeah. I mean, it is. I. I have heard people say in person, and I wasn't even goading them. I was. Well, what do you think about this in the Middle East? He's like, we should just nuke them. Just nuke them all. Yeah, nuke this. everybody in the Middle East. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's a... Uh... So it's going to hurt. And there's just literally nothing you can do about it if gasoline becomes scarce. Yeah. <laughs> Our fracking boom is over. Yeah. That means that like 7 million barrels a day... That we that has been the fracking boom to make up the difference between decline. That's going to go away in like seven months. Yeah. It's ending this summer. Yeah. Chesapeake Energy just declared bankruptcy. Yeah. If they don't drill new wells and they have to drill like five thousand four hundred a year, do the math. How many is that a day? If that goes away, seven million barrels disappear off the market, or like about six million barrels disappear off the market in about twelve months. Yeah. So a year from now, mugs. Yeah. And then they can't, they don't drill also because the price is so low. Yeah. I mean. Energy catalyzes its own production, but it also catalyzes the demand for all other consumer products. Yeah. So if you're on the, if you're on the downward slope of a fossil fuel boom, yeah. the downward slope of the peak, it's accelerating. Yeah. It accelerates. Decreased demand for all consumer products depresses further demand and products and more companies go bankrupt, yeah. which takes away working class people, which further decreases demand, yeah. which further decreases production. This is this is a dynamic that is almost impossible for people to understand. Yeah. But we it felt great when we were going up that roller coaster hill. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. Here we all go. Global civilization. Wah. It'll go on forever, right? And yeah. then, I mean, 2005 was the inflection point. Yeah. Holy jeeping fucking shit. You know, like, all assets, except for solar things that are solar powered, like your garden and your food and walking, <laughs> yeah. all those other assets are going to become stranded. Yeah. It's hard to think about this. Yeah. City centers are very expensive in terms of real estate. Yeah. Why? Because of energy. If the trucks stop running, the upper floors of your high-rise buildings become inhabited by cats, homeless people, yeah. and nothing else because you have to walk. Yeah. In, in Rome, which was more expensive? The ancient city of Rome at the height of the empire, the ground level floors or the upper floors? Where was the cheapest rent? It was at the top, the very top level. You had yeah. to walk six stories <laughs> upstairs. And they're all flammable. Yeah. 
Sweet. And there were constant fires in the city, and so if a fire started down below, you died. Yeah. The cheapest rent was at the absolute very top. Top. Not where, the bottom. Where the most it? expensive rent was at the very bottom because it's a human-powered, everything done by hand civilization. Why do you? Why would you build a really tall building? Yeah. Where you gotta get the fuck up there. Oh. What if you have to take a dump in the <laughs> middle of the night or take a piss? Yeah. No penthouses. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Here we hop in an elevator and shoop. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hi, I want the. I want the higher. I want the view. I want the really nice view. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that interesting? It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like your production centers are going to be really far away, as in like five miles away from your city centers, your cultural and your financial and your socio-political centers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! And we have and we have this industrialized food agriculture, which yeah. means that you know, I mean, I mean, I eat blueberries, you know, bananas, yep. grapes, orange juice. None of the, well, the blueberries are grown here, but yeah. not not until now are they ripe. I get them. From, I don't buy them from Peru or Chile, but but yeah. uh, when they're coming from California or Mexico. Yeah. Uh, and, you th and that's all going to stop. Yep. Yeah. You're going to eat what you can get. Like you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What you can raise out here. Yeah. It'll be... I, I don't... If they roll out the molten salt reactor very, very, very quickly, as fast as they possibly can, then maybe you could bounce, but you're still going to have to go down. Mm -hmm. It will have to happen. There is no way around it. Yeah. And so it'll be like, how deep is the bounce? So you can either like go into a pretty, in the Western world, a pretty serious dark age, whereas in the Confucian universe, it'll be a softer bounce anyway. But if they roll out the molten salt reactor, it might be a bounce that then pulls us up. Yeah. You know, at least in the Pacific Rim. Yeah. You know, yeah. We'll join the Pacific Commonwealth. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's over. the The end of fossil fuels. The, the fossil fuel age is ending right before our eyes. Yeah. Who knew? A very mild virus was the trigger mechanism, but the aristocratic empire imposed upon the whole world by the West and specifically the United States at the end of World War II was what created the fuel for something to trigger. Yeah. Know, like it, this, this had to happen. This economic meltdown had to happen. Yeah. 2008 had to happen. Yeah. It's all just bubbles. Yeah. It's all just financial speculative bubbles. Yeah. So you see the American empires, how do you see it different, say, from the British empire? Um... I mean, are we the inheritors of that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. the next permutation of it. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. And, and I mean, Capitalism. somebody no less than Winston Churchill would agree with me. Yeah. He, he's, I mean, there were apparently conversations between him and FDR uh, of like, Churchill was saying, FDR, you know, our greatest president, you know, uh, said, no, there's going to be changes. And Churchill was like, no, there's financial arrangements we have, specifically with India, mostly, that we that are inviolate. And FDR was like, no, you're going to have to change that. You know, FDR dies, and Eisenhower didn't quite get it. You know, uh, but yeah, we're essentially the, the inheritors of the British Empire. Yeah. So it's it's the same can getting kicked down the road of you know, we have so much accumulated capital that we can use it to harvest the energies and financial uh, resources and labor of poor countries, yeah. you know? And so they're not able to, they're not able to lift themselves up by their own bootstraps yeah. because we're there with Wall Street to sit there and know we're gonna, ex ex yeah. yeah, you know? And uh, look at the IMF, 
you know, whenever, whenever a country goes to them, they always demand the same kinds of austerity, yeah. which is insane. Yeah. You're like, well, do you want to develop your country or not? No, you're going to, you're going to have all this austerity and you're not going to have universal health care and other things that make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So. Huh. Our financial empire, it seems, makes it very, we do everything we can, that, this is why we call it free markets, to take away the ability of governments and a tax, independent tax base to subsidize their own industries. Mm -hmm. So it's not the American empire, it's not the British empire, it's the capitalist empire. Yeah, yeah. it's part of that same, and in terms of the mentality, you know, you could say it goes all the way back to the first colonial, you know. Yeah. You look, you look at the arrangement of the British Empire when it was really getting going, the triangular trade in the Atlantic. Britain provided the finished goods and services, the, the high-end stuff, the markup. You get the markup for yeah. from their industrialization. So ships would s start from England, loaded up with high-end goods. Yeah. They would go to the United States. Uh, well, it wasn't the United States, the colonies. Yeah sell those goods yeah. at a premium yeah. for th and buy then what rum cotton cotton liquor raw materials timber yeah. across the atlantic south unload all that for slaves yeah you know it's the same sort of dynamic yeah. it's just on a global financial scale and when a group of people strong enough to say no yeah appears not even appears is has been there and recovers from the devastations of world war ii like russia or china yeah. we scream and scream and scream and scream and say oh no you're not free this isn't freedom you're oppressive you're awful and it's yeah. like actually you just want to impose this trade relationship on them that they don't accept yeah there's there's no we're not gonna we're not gonna let you skim off of us that's that's so interesting and so depressing but that's the way it was yeah and is but now it's over yeah this is why I think of it, it this is why our lower classes are in a state of revolt in a way yeah because when that relationship breaks down they know they're going to be the ones left holding the bill yeah not the elites no so they when the elites were effective enough and the forces of history were in the favor of an empire like that, we were happy with the elites, and we were happy, just, fi just fine and dandy, with that relationship imposed upon Nicaragua, Argentina, Brazil. Yeah. Their financial systems were linked to ours. They were our vassals. Yeah. Well, our middle class and lower class was just fine with that. You didn't see people marching in the streets to say, hey, we should normalize and bring justice to our trade relationships with Mexico. Yeah. You didn't see that, did you? No. In the 80s. No. Or the 90s. No. But the moment that relationship breaks down, you still have to feed the beast. Yeah. So now it's feeding on our lower classes, and now they're in a stage of revolt. Yeah. So, yeah, yes and no, same old story, but, you know, this type of empire doesn't have to exist, and it doesn't always exist in other parts of the world. Yeah. It's not universal human behavior. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. It's not, the Roman Empire was not like this. Yeah. It was a commonwealth. Yeah. The Achaemenid Empire was a commonwealth, you know. It's these colonial empires and these neo-colonial empires. Uh, yeah. Or like the Athenian Empire. <laughs> You know, but there's no link between the Athenian one and ours. It's just that kind of, Comparative. and it's not like it's only in the West. Like there have been tribute and uh, colonial style empires yeah. in other parts of the world. Yeah. You know, so, you know, think of a, I, so you can't, I'm not trying to paint with such a broad brush. No, and it's very important that we don't say, well, America's, Human nature is just like American nature. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Okay. What, the uh, Incan Empire was a commonwealth, a very yeah. short-lived one, in, yeah. the, you know, in terms of time. And the, the Chinese Empire was for... Commonwealth, yeah. yeah. More or less, yeah. How, how would you compare Russia with these empires? Uh, it, yeah, more of a commonwealth. Yeah. Yeah, truly. Uh, it's really, it's funny. Uh, here we go. So, 
I'll start with the Comanche. So the Comanche nation was basically steppe nomads in North America. They got their horses from, in 1680, there was a revolt against the Spanish empire by the Pueblo, the, the, the Pueblo nation. There's like 12 of them, on, you know, um, who are not Comanche. They revolt, they kick the Spanish out and horses make their way from that, because of that breakdown, wild horses are now spreading north into the Great Plains. The Comanche, whose homeland is more in like Utah, find these horses and become steppe nomads without sheep or cattle or goats, hunting steppe nomads in, about, in like 50 years. Yeah. And then they, after other things happened, they started raiding very deep into Spanish Mexico, uh, New Spain. The, the Comanche is located in like Texas, you know, mm -hmm. Oklahoma panhandle area. Fabulous grassland. And these long trails of raiders going, like they got within like 100 miles of Mexico City. Yeah. They're taking slaves, loot, they are burning monasteries. They're like Vikings on horseback. <laughs> taking it all north again on these trails and then they would use the slaves to you know process buffalo they would sell horses and and goods they would be fences to uh the texas republic and the american republic and the weakening of mexico because of these comanche raids was one of the reasons the american war against them was so successful because it shattered northern mexico huh Well before that, for hundreds of years, Crimean Tatar and Mongol Turkic type raids deep north into Russia happened for hundreds of years following an incredibly similar pattern, even geographically, these long trails of these, these roads, these, these well-known trails to the, the nomads going deep into Russian territory, sacking monasteries, taking slaves and really loot, pulling them down to the Crimea and at the port of Kaffa, selling them the slaves, Slavs, Slavic <laughs> peoples. That's what it's from. Yeah, I didn't realize Slav. that. I'll be dark. Slav, Grand March Slav, huh. selling them in the port of Kaffa to the Ottoman Empire. Huh. Kaffa was known, known as the port that drinks Russia's blood. Huh. Russia responded to this by growing like an amoeba south. It was called the Great Abattis Line. These enormous fortifications that they would build, they would dig them out of earth, spiked, uh, you know, like dikes, yeah. big ditches with spiked, uh, what are the spears? What, are, yeah. great, what, what is that? Huh. I don't know, stockades? Yeah. That's what the Kremlin is. Kremlin yeah. is a term for just like fortified stone, strong place. There's yeah. a Kremlin of Moscow, but there's also a Kremlin of Novgorod uh. and a Kremlin, Kremlin of Smolensk. Uh. And, they, and they would burn all the grasslands to the south to deprive the nomads of fodder. And they would advance those fortifications year after year, decade and decade. And they pushed south like an amoeba until eventually it was only the Crimea that the Tatars had. And then they took the Crimea. Huh. And it took like 300 goddamn years. It would, this, is, this is from the breakup of the Golden Horde. When the, so the Mongols were directly ruled and sent tribute. Well, you can't raid people who are already giving you all their stuff. And about the 1550s, they, it was a little bit earlier than that. Uh, they kick off out the Mongols, descendants of Genghis Khan, literally. And uh, the steppe nomads break up and then they start... Uh, uh, raiding into into slavic territory and they would put they push south and they took the step the, the western step from the mongols so to talk about the russian empire you have to understand the amount of suffering they went through just to just to protect themselves and to this day i mean not not even to, to say to this day they saved Western Europe from the Mongols. They saved Western Europe from Napoleon. They saved Western Europe from Hitler. Hmm. And now they saved Western Europe from the American Empire. They, they just defeated us. They broke us. I don't know how else to say it. Hmm. They just shattered. 
by refusing to turn off their oil, they just broke our shale industry. Yeah. So now America is really hollow. Yeah. It's a broken reed that'll pierce the hand of anybody who leans on it, like Germany. And now they are the national the natural gas and oil supplier for Western Europe. Yeah. And they don't they don't need to conquer Western Europe, but they'll just sell them their natural gas. <laughs> Ru so Russia is really something as far as empires go. But within Russia, it's basically a commonwealth. You know, the yeah. the, the government the central government it, is almost non-existent at the local level. Yeah. Huh. Uh, they don't have to impose tribute. Their population is too low for their size. I swear yeah. to God, they need to work on exploiting their own resources. Yeah. But they, I mean, the Great Abattis line is just incredible. It would, it would go south decade after decade. Yeah. You, and you, they would open up new areas for settlement, and you could build farms and things on the other side, and the nomads would make it over. And so you would be a Russian peasant, you know, 200 miles south of Moscow or something, and you don't know. If you're going to wake up in the middle of the night surrounded by Tatar slavers with your barns burning down yeah. and all your goats and cattle are, yeah. have already been rustled yeah. and there goes your wife and children yeah. and they're going to, you're going to get stuck full of arrows as you try to flee your burning house for hundreds of years. Yeah. <laughs> so this extension then, is it part of a central plan or is mm -hmm. it something more spontaneous? Yes. No, no, it was a central plan. Uh, uh, obviously, no, no plan lasts hundreds of years, but Moscow, started, starting under what, Ivan the Third, Ivan uh, the Great, not Ivan the Terrible, he was the fourth. Yeah. Uh, Moscow, I think Ivan the Third was also known as Ivan Moneybags. Uh, <laughs> or maybe it was another guy before him. Uh, he... They called him money bags because he was the guy who collected the tribute for the Mongols. <laughs> so he got his cut. Uh, Before the Mongols, uh, Moscow wasn't very important. Yeah. Kiev was the center of it. But okay. they, the Mongols conquered all of Russia in like three years uh, in the 1240s. Yeah. Three years. They're the only ones who have ever conquered Moscow. I mean, Russia. The, the, the Kiev, the only two cities they didn't burn down. One, it was Novgorod because it's surrounded by swamp and like Piskov or something. Yeah. But they burned and sacked every Russian city in like three years. They would campaign during the winter. Yeah. What the fuck are you supposed to do? You wake up one morning in your wooden city behind a wooden wall and there's 60,000 Mongols outside of you. Yeah. They would take a city in like four days. You know, yeah. they, they had excellent siege warfare. And so... And then for 300 years, just about, the Mongols ruled them. The yoke. <laughs> Golden horde. Hey, I saw flocks of birds. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to go out and look? See if the hawk's out there? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. I mean, it's up there where it happens. If you well, I mean, that, I mean, there was a huge flock of birds, not just these birds. Sure. I'm okay, so we'll yeah. stop. Yeah. Okay. Keep friends with Russia. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, Don't take my word for it. That was uh, Otto von Bismarck. Was it? Yeah. yeah, Kaiser didn't... Wilhelm didn't listen to him. <laughs> and I think history <laughs> knows the rest. Yeah. Keep friends with Russia. Yeah. They just broke America this year. Yeah. The Cold War is over. We lost. 